What are you doing? I'm just trying to catch a drone for my mother. No, don't catch any drones right now. Why? She wants one. Although, can you point out what a drone looks like? Um, it's a fat. It's right there. That's a fabby. Oh, it is. Fabby. fabby. It's hard to catch them with that. Let's not bother them right now, though, because okay. you know what we're doing. Okay. We're going inside this hive because what are we looking for? Um, Ross rounds. Ross rounds. Do you think? Oh, what kind of hive is it? Apple Apame hive. Um, so these so are we already pulled the top um, off. The, uh, all Apame hives will be a plastic beehive. Plastic beehives insulated by the way. Yes, insulated by the way. So what we did is Clean um, we made sure that these are empty. Yeah, right? we made sure. Yeah. And now that we've pulled honey off all the hives, is it okay to feed any hives that are struggling? Yeah, sure. It is, because then we don't have to worry about it getting in our honey. So we prop these up. Now there's vent holes along these edges, right? Yeah. We talked about that. Vent holes. Do the bees want vent holes there or not? No. How do we know they don't? Bees that are, um, bees are running it off so near it comes in. So no air. So well, how connected. are they keeping air from going through? Putting propolis in they there. They put propolis on it. That's right. They sealed everything up, even these little caps yep. where the food is. Yeah, that's why we need honey. Um, that's They're why propolis. we need honey tools. Right well... I think this is pretty loose. This is our last hot day of the year, really. Yes, and... So if we pull this off... What? Well, oh, here's the bees. So we put Cirrusel Ross Round Holders in here. Yes. Please subscribe. Oh, we don't usually say that. Yeah, but... So we have a Cirrusel that takes a double deep. We're going to pull that up. They have not drawn out all the comb out here. Mm -hmm. So this colony actually has a lot of space the work that needs to be filled. So we're also going to be putting in drawn comb. Okay, this side looks good though. Yeah. So we've got how many frames of capped honey? Um, from capped honey, um, I see at how least many, one or two. How many frames do you see with oh, capped honey? One, um, I'd say about two or three. Can you count them? I think one's right here. One? No, no, one right here. I think maybe one. Okay, right let me ask you a question. Yeah. First of all, we have to be careful how we set these down because look at all the bees on the bottom. True. Yeah. So what's good about the Apame covers mm -hmm. is they're already perfect to post your feeders on. Mm -hmm. Now what I want you to look at here though, you can see the honeycomb is capped here. Capped honey, yeah. It's also capped on this one. And honey is capped on this one, yep. and on this one. So how many capped frames of honey do we have? At least um, two. One, two, three, three. Four, four deep frames of capped honey. Yeah, these two different colonies with this. So that's really way. good. But what we're after is what's on these black frames. Mm -hmm. Now, should I just pull this straight up? I know you probably don't know the answer to this. Would I just pull these straight up, or should I pull these to the side first? Um, pull straight up. That is a good guess, but we always want to pull them to the side first. So we're going to start over here where these frames are empty. And what we do is we put our hive tool right between those two slots there. And then we just push it to the wall the way you did. And then the next one over, we do the same thing. Now we don't have to do every individual one. Okay, so don't bother with that. Let's go all the way over here and get it into that joint between the black plastic and the wood. And you just want to pry that apart. It's hard. Okay, we're going to pause and I'm going to go ahead and divide those up for you. But we want to take these four frames, push them all over to the side, and that way when we pull these up, we don't take a chance that any bees that are in between those frames will get rolled between the frames yeah. and die. Yeah, I have a question. So, yeah, what's your question? Two, are these two different colonies? Is this is black part. It's like four frames. Like right. Five and then... You see how yellow five. these are? Yeah. And then how plain these are. They yes. all started the same, but two, they finished one, out these two, four. Three, four, five, then one, two, three, four, five. All right, let's get these pulled because we're in robbing season now. We don't yep. want them exposed for a long yep. time. Okay, so we pulled Ross rounds only to find out that they don't fit in the hive butlers the way they are. 
So we're gonna pack these in. They're still a little incomplete, but we also did some damage to the hive. We have lots of honey here. So the Ross rounds were built right into the side of the adjacent frames, honey. So we're gonna close this up. High robbing potential. And the honey drip down inside. So let's get this other one out. Okay, so we made a mess in there. We have lots of honey spilled on the bottom. And what we're gonna do is take the frames that are off to the sides now, and we're just gonna push them all to the middle, then we're gonna add secondary frames to the outside. So we're gonna pause, I just wanted you to see what the mess is. Okay, so we took the existing frames now and we've pushed them all to the middle. We did not have deep frames, so Quinn's gonna take the mediums here. We've got bees on them. And we're gonna put these on the ends. Okay, so we've got that. We'll take the next one, thank you. And we're gonna put this on the far end. Now remember that when we pulled them out, these ends were not drawn out anyway. And then we wanna push them to the middle. Push these to the middle. How many frames do we have, Quinn? 10, ten frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sure do. So are you ready to close it up, you think? Okay, so before we close it up, we wanna check all the edges to make sure that there's nothing standing up that would interfere with closing it up. Half of May, so we go ahead Put these right on, very simple. And that's it. We have to collect these bees off the top. What do we have to collect them? Um, do we have a little vacuum cleaner over there? Yeah. Wanna grab that? Okay, so go ahead and just vacuum the bees off the top here, and then we'll put the lid on. There you go. There you go, get that one. Anything else? Take a quick look around. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll bump it back out. And then you just open the end and let them right back out. There you go. We'll close this up. And we're done. So now we have everything on the kitchen table and it's time to show what a mess we made. I'm gonna pull out these uh, frames again, Cirocell. And remember, we used them in a way that they weren't intended to be used. So we end up with a lot of partials, a lot of extra comb on them, and propolis to deal with. So we're gonna go step by step here, gonna pull them all apart so you can see what we end up with is, of course, uh, comb honey. That's good for family and friends, and these are the giveaways. Look at this one all torn up. And that's because, remember, it was in contact with the adjacent frame inside the hive, and they blended their beeswax to the other frames that are standard deep frames. And these are the remnants here from when we pulled them apart. If we had done this with all of the cell frames and nothing else, we wouldn't have had this problem at all. Uh, that's not to say that the bees would have pulled it all out completely. The colony wasn't as strong as it needed to be for Ross Rounds, but I would say we didn't do too bad because if you keep watching, we actually salvaged five of them. So there is a video where I show you step by step when you put them on a real strong colony and you use Cirocell frames in a Cirocell box, which is a shallow super. And you can check that out down in the video description. I'm going to pull these apart. Now remember, these are the Ross Round frames as they come from Ross Round. The only difference would be the brackets that come from Cirocell. Those are the white pieces on the ends. And that holds them together so that we can put them in a deep Super. Now I also put these on some of my resource hives, which would be nucleus hives, five frames. So if you did that and you put five over five and got your bees going, so that's 10 deep frames. And then on the top box, if you put these in, and I'm gonna try that again next spring, 
Today is October the 25th, so we're too late to do that. Uh, but next year, with the resource nucleus hives, if we've got two boxes solid that's 10 deep frames and we put that third box on, I think I'm going to try this out again. And we're going to put nothing but serious cell frames on the top of that. So I think it would be all right. The other thing is, obviously, I should have scraped away the bottom burr comb there. The bees cleaned that up pretty quick. The colony did not get robbed, so that's the good news. We closed it up uh, in time before other bees discovered them. And now we just pry these apart. This is pretty standard, and you have to cut away the foundation wax. Now, you may be wondering, the foundation wax that we use here, where did it come from? Well, I sourced it all from Better Bee. And uh, get that foundation. It is designed to be eaten. It's thinner than normal foundation in your beehive. And uh, you can see that some of it was damaged there now. I'd like to point that out too. Right behind my right hand there, you can see the foundation had holes in it. The bees did not want to mend those holes. So when you're putting these together, it is not really an opportunity to use scraps or leftovers. They really have to fill the entire round. So once we get these apart, now that one's nice and thick, well thicker than it should have been. And again, if we had an adjacent Ross round frame up against that, they wouldn't have been able to draw it out so far. So now you have just have to go around and cut away the edges of the foundation and uh, then you'll have Ross rounds and you get clear or semi opaque covers that go on these and they fit together. And then of course they're held together by the label, which is a very special Ross round label. Other labels don't go all the way around. And I find that I also have to tape those on. I'm going to show you that at the very end, but you can see that these are novelties. You can give people comb honey this way. Uh, when they get it, they can just pull the label off from around the circumference and then they can use a knife to divide them in half or they can cut right through the whole thing. So some people want me to use hog halves and things like that. Uh, the way these are set up, you have comb drawn out on both sides of the foundation. So you end up with a really thick, roughly nine ounces of uh, comb honey with these. So this one actually is one of the better looking ones. Remember, we only had two of the assembled frames. But remember, they're double stacked, so that's actually eight on each frame. So if it had gone perfectly, you end up with a pretty good harvest. But uh, I'm going to not recommend that you put them in amongst regular frames. I think if you're going to do it, you're going to want to either put some kind of follower board in there to prevent them from drawing out the adjacent comb, or you're going to have to default to using nothing but these uh, Cirocell Ross round frame brackets. So these don't look terrible. None of these would be what you would offer for sale, for example, just because uh, they represent you and your apiary. And I think you want to make sure that things are drawn out well, edge to edge, and all the cells would be filled and capped. The other thing is you get your hands sticky constantly, but here's a close up for you. And the rings, everything you buy a kit, it all comes together. So you can actually purchase Ross round frames that are preloaded with the foundation, with the white rings. And then of course you put them in your hive and the really strong colonies will take care of them for you. You can see that one because of the adjacent frame drawn out too far. These are the clear covers. You have the option to get the opaque covers. I prefer clear on both sides because if you're giving honey to someone, you want them to see both sides in my opinion. And then we'll just put the labels on and we'll like look at that one on the end. That's a giveaway for sure. When you have grandchildren begging to chew some uh, comb honey, this is what you want to give them your cast offs. So here it is with the label on it and where the label overlaps. I put tape on it and you're required uh, to list the, the weight, the net weight of the contents and of course where it comes from. But if you're just handing it directly to someone, you can get away with that. So we end up with what? Like one, two, three, we end up with five decent ones. Now when I put out the remnants that were still capped honey, it was an opportunity to look at the bees. How tough is it really for them to get through capped honey? And it actually takes them quite a bit. And you'll notice that when one starts to get through, the other bees show up. This one's got its tongue through a tiny hole. And what a great way for it to extract the honey from that cell 
without tearing it completely open because there's so much competition here with other bees that are around they would be stealing that honey out of that cell so those with the sharpest mandibles those that can get it open first are definitely going to benefit from that and now they're all cleaned up so thanks for watching i hope you found this entertaining